This is Jeremy Sports Network coming to you live. Hey you guys, today we are going to talk about the NFC East and the new acquisitions that have been made so far on the rosters heading into uh, the 2017 NFL Draft. And we're going to start with the New York Giants. The New York Giants, after getting rid of Victor Cruz, you still have Odell Beckham. So you're thinking... Well, who should the Giants add? They go and get a big receiver in Brandon Marshall. Okay? Compared to last year, this has been a quiet offseason for the Giants. But that's okay, though. That's okay. Because now that they got Brandon Marshall, you know what? And they brought back Jason Pierre-Paul and gave him the deal that he's been looking for and the deal that he's been wanting. He's going to go out and play hard. We know what JPP brings to the table. But you added Brandon Marshall in replace of a Victor Cruz with Odell still on the other side. And you have a two-time winning quarterback in Eli Manning with a great complimentary defense. You, we don't know where the Giants can be right now competing in that division with the Dallas Cowboys. I, I see good things happening in New York, which can potentially... Give them the division. It's going to be a, a battle between them and Dallas, which we're going to head over and talk talk about now, are the Dallas Cowboys. But the Dallas Cowboys, they did lose four DBs, right? They lost Brandon Carr, Morris Claiborne, Barry Church, and J.J. Wilcox, who all played for a combined snaps of 2,645 uh, snaps in 2016. But... Their, notable, their only notable addition that they have is Nolan Carroll. So the defense didn't get better. The defense gotten worse in Dallas. So they better hope that Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott don't encounter sophomore slumps going into next season because when you look at Dallas, they got a lot of holes to fill on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, you still have Orlando Skandrick as well who is one of the top corners in this league, but he's on a decline to me in my eyes. And so you have to get better and put yourselves in a better position in order to win. And right now I don't see it from Dallas still having Tony Romo on the roster, which I think Dallas can potentially make a move in the draft with using Tony Romo in order to achieve more trades um, or get better picks with having Tony Romo as that bait going into the draft uh, that night. But it remains to be seen because he's still on the roster. Free agency is still going. You still have guys that are out there, big-time names that are out there, Jamal Charles, Adrian Peterson, some of the names just to throw out there. But it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Although that Prescott and, and Ezekiel Elliott had great years on last year, but now teams can actually prepare for you after having a full season of what you can do and what you can bring to the table. Now, do I believe that's going to affect Ezekiel Elliott any? I don't think so. More so uh, that Prescott, I believe, could be more affected by it because of the now you get different mixed coverages and packages and, and teams actually doing um, whatever they can in order to make your weaknesses be glorified. But it remains to be seen with the Dallas Cowboys. They had a phenomenal year on last year. But we'll see if they're, if they're able to match that same intensity that they brought to the table last year. And they could do it again this year after losing like that to Green Bay. Do you think the Dallas Cowboys can make it back? I mean... It remains to be seen. You give up a big play to Jared Cook, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> and you turn around and you lose four DBs, <laughs> and you haven't picked up anything yet. It remains to be seen in Dallas. But we're going to move forward and talk about those Washington Redskins. Because right now, the Washington Redskins, their front office is in turmoil, complete turmoil but 
they do reserve some deserve some credit for still having Kirk Cousins on their roster though. Because Kirk Cousins to me is a really good quarterback. He's a proven quarterback as well. He betted on himself and he is going to get paid big bucks. Because he performs. You can't give me none of that RG3 or, or, or any of that crap when it come down to Washington because Kirk Cousins have been the man since, since he took the job from RG3. But the thing is, with them, they did add Terrell Pryor to the squad, but you lose Pierre Garçon. Pierre Garçon is going to the 49ers. But you replace him with Terrell Pryor. Yeah, he have a high ceiling, but he's not a Pierre Garçon. Not yet, anyway. And then you lose Deshaun Jackson to Tampa. You let him go to Tampa. But, you know, it, it, it remains to be seen. They still need... um. They still need to fill some holes on their defense. Although they do have young pass catchers. But they were 8, 7, and 1. Do I believe they can win 10 games next year? I doubt it. Only see Washington winning another maybe 8 or 9 games. Struck, you know squeaking their way into the playoffs perhaps it depends it really do depends because you have Philadelphia whose top pro- top priority this offseason has been giving Carson Wentz more weapons seriously because they go out and get Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith both of those are on friendly deals right even though they lost Carol, Logan, I mean, what is it that Dallas, I mean, not Dallas, Philadelphia has done in order to help Carson Wentz out even more? And and then they had, I believe they picked on Nick Foles. I believe Nick Foles came back, if I'm not mistaken, to Philly. I have to check into that. But I believe Nick Foles came back to Philly on a and and signed a huge contract. So if you have Carson Wentz and you turn around and you pick up and and you turn around and you pick up uh, Nick Foles all over again and you pay him money. Like, what does that say for Carson Wentz? You could have kept Carson Wentz and brought in somebody like a Colin Kaepernick. Or, or, or it's a lot of free agent names that are out there like RG3. Something like that. But you turn around and bring back Nick Foles to, and you pay him uh, a good heap of cash. To me, that's not smart. If you're Philly, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's a security blanket to have Nick Foles. As your backup. But at the same time. You have a lot more holes to fill. If you're Philadelphia. You, you're you competing with the Dallas Cowboys. Who are on a rise. You're competing with. Um, not only them. But you're competing with. The likes of the Giants. Who just added. Brandon Marshall to their squad. And that defense that they have. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? And the Redskins to me are better than than Philly right now with Kirk Cousins. Although he doesn't have the necessary weapons of uh, Alshon Jeffrey or or Torrey Smith. But right now, Kirk Cousins is more proven than what Carson Wentz is. And Carson Wentz to me had a pretty okay year. But like I said, it remains to be seen. This is Jeremy Sports Network giving you a full breakdown coverage of the NFC East. 
and we will be moving on next to the AOC West and the AOC South by the end of this week. So this is Jeremy Sports Network coming to you live. Please make sure you guys tune in and subscribe. Make sure you like the page. You can follow us on Facebook at Jeremy Sports Network. And I am out. Peace.